we know there's at least 26 hormones and peptides that uh, pull on the appetite uh, uh, tug of war inside your brain. So I don't want to say that, um, and it's not true that some people find it extremely difficult to, to you know, not overeat, but um, there is no human alive who, if they stop eating carbon atoms or eat less of them than they breathe out, there's no human that won't lose weight. There is There, there are a couple of diseases like uh, lipodemia, which is a terrible affliction that uh, where people store fat and they can no longer, for very mysterious biochemical reasons, they, they can't get the fat back out of their fat cells. So, you know, for people with those sorts of conditions, um, they can't get rid of the weight because they have a genetic issue going on. So I'm, I'm referring to people who, ah, well, let me take a step back there. For the people with lipidemia, if they eat less carbon atoms than they breathe out, they will still end up losing some weight, um, but they, it's very hard for them to budge the fat from certain parts of the body. It's really complicated at, when you get down to the level of what's going in and out of fat cells, but if you just zoom out and remember that every time you inhale, you've breathed in oxygen, but when you exhale, you're breathing out some carbon as well as oxygen. Therefore, your body is always losing a bit of mass. And like, it's not like this is news, you know. If you look up the, uh, the early research done by NASA and probably the Russians as well on putting humans into space, they went and figured out precisely exactly how much stuff comes out of a person through their bladder, uh, through their rectum, through their lungs and their skin. And it's all being published in NASA technical reports. We know how much carbon a human loses through their lungs every day. Uh, submariners in submarines um, studied it even earlier because the problem with exhaled carbon dioxide which we don't often think about because we're not often in a, a, a confined space. But if you lock yourself into an airtight container at, that's not very big and you just sit in there and breathe, very quickly the carbon dioxide levels go up and up and up and up. And once they get to a few percent, you're going to start to feel very dizzy and um, you'll die if you don't get out into fresh air because not only are you consuming the oxygen in there, you're poisoning the air with uh, carbon dioxide, which... You know, a little bit's not poison, but when carbon dioxide levels get up to 5%, you're, you're starting to get into really big trouble. Um, right. So we're always losing carbon. We're always losing weight, 24 hours a day. So the answer is when you're losing weight, the weight that you're losing fat is made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and only those three elements. So that's um, element number one, element number six, and element number eight on the periodic table for the nerds out there. <laughs> and... When you are losing the weight, you are converting this substance called fat into carbon dioxide and water, and all of the carbon dioxide you breathe out and all of the water comes out of you, either it can come out of sweat, urine, um, tears. So the thing that I, I thought that was the most fascinating fact of all, if I'm losing weight, I'm turning it into carbon dioxide and water. The next question that I had being a physics nerd, was if I'm losing it in these two uh, ways, carbon dioxide and water, how much of the weight that I lose do I exhale and how much of that weight becomes water, which I can lose in all those other ways? And this number knocked me for six. The fact that when you lose 10 kilograms or 10 pounds, or uh, 10 whatever units of measure you like, if you're losing 10 kilograms, 8.4 of them you exhale as carbon dioxide and the 1.6 uh, kilograms remaining that becomes water, which is one and a half, a bit over one and a half litres of water. It's a lot of water. Um, all of that water ends up in your body water mixed with your, you know, all the, uh, the water that you drink. We call it metabolic water. It's water that you made out of atoms that you inhaled, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms that you ate, you marry those up in, uh, it's called the electron transport chain, this part of the, uh, the uh, metabolism or the metabolic pathway. But you're making fresh water molecules out of what was oxygen in the air and what was hydrogen in your food. 
and you make 1.6 liters out of uh, of that water when you lose 10 kilograms of weight, which is again just wonderful stuff to know. I don't know that it helps anyone particularly. It's just <laughs> so, it's just such cool stuff. 